video we will discuss about graves disease now for the thyroid i have one hashimoto's thyroiditis video already on my channel we will discuss the thyroid gland in detail the now we are discussing the graves disease now what is grave disease graves disease is the most common cause of endogenous hyperthyroidism okay it also goes by the name diffuse toxic goiter autoimmune hyperthyroidism that means the pathogenesis is autoimmune so as the name suggests it is autoimmune hyperthyroidism autoimmune hypothyroidism is hashimoto's disease okay then it is also known as base dose disease it affects mostly uh, women in the age of 20 to 40 years of age now the women they are affected more than the men as in almost all the thyroid gland you will see women uh, diseases you will see the women will be affected more than the males now going to the clinical findings okay we'll discuss about the clinical findings and we'll go to the pathogenesis and the morphology okay so clinical findings there are three main clinical findings which are seen in uh, patients first is hyperthyroidism okay and this is associated with diffuse enlargement of the gland now the gland you have to remember the enlargement is diffuse okay if it's a butterfly shaped gland and the enlargement is diffuse of the gland then second is infiltrative ophthalmopathy with resultant ex exomthalmos so you can see the eyes will be of the person will be very protruding so this is the second uh, clinical feature the third clinical feature seen in some patients is the infiltrative dermopathy that means uh, in the dermis of the person there is something depositing which leads to the uh, thickening of the dermis uh, this is known as infiltrative dermopathy and this is also known as pre-tibial myxedema because this is mostly seen, seen over the shin of the tibia okay on the shin of the person okay this is seen so this is the three features which are very much seen in the patients face, uh, suffering from graves disease along with these clinical findings you will also have clinical features which be, will be associated with hyperthyroidism now person who is suffering from hyperthyroidism will be having heat intolerance okay so we are not discussing the features of hyperthyroidism in this video but few of the features are like heat intolerance anxiety tremors these are the features which are associated because of increase in the thyroid hormones now other features which can be seen is the increased blood flow because there is increased increased blood flow through the thyroid gland this will also produce audible brew if you examine the person you can feel the brew over there and also because these are autoimmune diseases the other autoimmune diseases also come along okay some of these persons are most uh, uh, more risk of the sle pernicious anemia type 1 diabetes and addison's disease now going to the pathogenesis now pathogenesis uh, this uh, is uh, works on the principle of type 5 hypersensitivity reaction that's uh, in the type 5 hypersensitivity reaction what happened what was there that there is certain antibody which is formed and this antibody attacks specific receptor so this is the uh, type 5 uh, hypersensitivity reaction type so graves disease is an autoimmune disease in which there are auto antibodies which are formed against the thyroid proteins mostly the you have your uh, tsh receptor against the tsh receptor there are some antibodies now antibodies what they do is they bind to the tsh receptor and they stimulate it okay so antibodies they either stimulate the tsh receptor and they will increase the uh, production of the thyroid hormones okay so what uh, the most common antibody type if you see in this uh, uh, graves disease is thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin and this will bind to the tsh receptor mimics its action and increases the release of the thyroid hormones that that uh, will produce the hyperthyroidism now this was the hyperthyroidism the first feature why it takes place now second is in the feature in the clinical feature we discussed that per person has ophthalmopathy per person presents with the protrusion of eye so why there is protrusion of eye in case of your 
Graves' disease. Now, there are some uh, findings because of which it happens. Firstly, in the retroorbital space, there is infiltration by the mononuclear cells. That is your neutrophils. Okay, so there is in, uh, uh, inflammatory cells are increased there in the retroorbital space. Then there is inflammation over there with a demand swelling of the extra auricular muscles also there is accumulation of extracellular matrix components and lastly there is also fatty infiltration now these all changes because these are space changes okay there is uh, infiltration of inflammatory cells then edema is also coming along with that then extracellular matrix components are there then fatty infiltration is there this will all displace the eyeball forward and this will lead to weakening of the extra auricular ocular muscles also okay the extra ocular muscles in these persons are also weak now one thing you have to remember that when we are giving the treatment also to these persons then also this exophthalmos is uh, not reversible it is irreversible now going to the gross picture so how the gross in the person of graves disease will look like firstly uh, i told you there is diffuse enlargement okay that means there is symmetrically enlarged gland there is symmetrically the thyroid gland is enlarged due to diffuse hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the thyroid follicular epithelial cells now if you remember what is the meaning of hypertrophy it is increase in the size of the uh, each cell and hyperplasia increase in the number of cells okay so the thyroid follicular cells they show both hyperplasia there is increase in the number of cell and also there is increase in the size of these cells so this is the feature on cut section if you see the thyroid gland so thyroid gland will have a very meaty appearance to it and will resemble as that of muscle okay so th uh, this is the cut surface okay so it resembles that of a muscle and it is very enlarged in size now going to the microscopy now in microscopy so firstly you should know that we, we discussed there is hyperplasia okay so hyperplasia means the increased number of cells are there so that means the follicular epithelial cells if you will see under the slide they will appear more crowded there will be hyperplasia will be there and also there are sometimes there is pr uh, presence of small papillae so what happens is if this is your colloid okay sometimes it appears that the thyroid follicular epithelial cells they are so proliferated and they assume a sp uh, shape of papillae this papillae they are having no fibrovascular core okay these papillae they don't have any fibrovascular core as you see in papillary carcinoma which we will discuss later on okay so these pep uh, these th uh, thyroid follicular cells can also form small small papillae also also uh, if you see the colloid within the thyroid follicular epithelial cell, the colloid is present inside. Okay, this colloid will be pale, can have scalloped margins also. Other features which can be seen is the lymphoid infiltrates and the fibrosis. So, in the picture, it will be more clear. If you see over here, here, so you can see the scalloping of the colloid. You have this, uh, you have your thyroid follicle okay then you have colloid the light light pink is the colloid and then you can see the empty spaces okay the white white empty spaces like this this is known as the scalloping of the colloid so scalloping of the colloid can be present then small small papillae can be present okay formation of small papillae can be there then there can be presence of lymphoid infiltrate and if this uh, disease gets chronic okay the patient is suffering for a lot of time okay so then fibrosis can also be seen in these persons okay so this is the microscopic picture of the patient suffering from graves disease now going to the extra thyroidal changes apart from the thyroid but all you can see is you can also see thymic hyperplasia you can see orbital edema as we ad uh, already understood that ophthalmopathy is present so edema will be there also fibrosis can there also then in dermis also you can see thickening of the per, uh, of the dermis then lab findings what will it show now lab findings will be consistent with that of the hyperthyroidism and in hyperthyroidism what you see is you have increased t3 and t4 that is your thyroid hormones and you will have decreased tsh okay because it's uh, automatic only the t uh, there it increases and it leads to decrease in the tsh level then antibodies such as tsi 
the thyroid stimulating uh, antibody it can be positive then th if you go towards radio iodine scans this will show there is diffusely increased uptake of iodine going to the treatment in treatment multiple uh, treatments are given first treatment is to avoid the symptoms that is the beta blockers beta blockers are given to reverse the symptoms so because in these person they have increased sympathetic tone they have increased beta adrenergic uh, symptoms so such as like tachycardia palpitation tremors anxiety so we give beta blockers in these patients second uh, treatment approach is to decrease the thyroid hormone production so uh, therefore anti thyroid uh, uh, drugs such as propyl thiouracil uh, radio iodine ablation and even thyroidectomy can be done in these patient but thyroidectomy is done only in those person which have massive uh, enlargement of the thyroid gland which uh, which will have large goiter and that will be compressing the surrounding structures so this uh, was all about the graves disease uh, do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these type of videos also click the notification bell so that you can uh, receive the updates whenever i post the video thanks for watching this video you can ask any queries in the comment box thank you